Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. I'm back from vacation. It is the new year, so happy new year. And it is 2015. We've got all sorts of new things happening in KSP, among which of course is the 0.90 beta version. I'm not going to upgrade this uh, install to that uh, unless I'm very, very, very certain that uh, I can keep it stable and I can do it without changing anything. Uh, in terms of, you know, parts getting deleted or stuff like that, or ships being randomly destroyed. So uh, it's probably going to be a while before I uh, upgrade this to 0 0.90. And of course, the main thing is that the career mode has changed so much that I don't think, I don't think it can be done very easily or smoothly. But I'll take a look at the code of the persistent file and maybe it's possible to figure out exactly how to upgrade this. Uh, maybe okay we'll see but that's not priority really uh, first things first in the previous episode I brought the station into orbit around Duna and that got us oodles worth of science so I want to see about deploying that science nuclear propulsion is a much bigger category than it was without the without the mods I mean it used to be basically just the LVN here but now we've got all sorts of interesting things, heat radiators, uh, scanners for a carborundum. Ooh. Carborundum seems to be a new resource that I'm going to have to be paying attention to if I want to run nuclear stuff. Okay. Um, we've got some, oh, the horizontal winches, I've been wanting those. Uh, not the horizontal, the radio winches, horizontal and vertical. And another container. But the rest of these parts are more construction like and I'm not that's not a priority right now. Ah, okay. Space plane parts. We we really need to do some space plane stuff, don't we? Um so that's an interesting point. More space plane parts. Capsule. Okay, uh not to belabor things. We'll get more science. Let's go for the space plane stuff. Uh that uh promises interesting adventures ahead so we'll do that but the first things first I need to take a look at fulfilling some more of the contracts around Duna so let's turn to our Duna missions okay here we are with Jed and Kerman at, and the CRT which will be doing our main exploration of Duna in this case since we haven't launched a rover to the planet yet and uh, just checking up on our life support situation the the key one is the Kerbatat, and it's got 74 days left, so probably plenty of time for us to conduct the missions that we have to do. Taking a look at the contracts, we've got uh, aerial surveys of Kerbin. No, that's that's not the one. Um, chart. There's the rover one, and then here, uh, perform aerial surveys of Duna at an altitude of 2,500-ish to 4,300-ish at these sites. So. We've got that contract and also we need to land on Duna and transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of Duna. So those are two contracts we can do simultaneously. We just need to go for one of these sites and then we'll also fill this contract if we land at that place uh, after doing the aerial survey, uh, the survey of it. And it looks like this one is the easiest one to get to in terms of inclinations. So let's head for that one first to make sure that we can do this properly. And so we've got uh, 802 meters per second left in the in the transfer stage, which we still have attached to us. And then once we dump that, we'll have the rest of our delta V, which should be more than enough to do everything we need to do: landing on the planet and then getting back up again. Hopefully, hopefully we haven't added any carbonite mining ability or even carbonite detection to our systems yet. So that's a downside. We really should have done that. But for now, I guess this will be all right. 300 meters per second, not bad. It's getting into the dark side, though. That's going to be trouble. But let's try it anyway. Oh, uh, let's take Smart ASS off. Or, okay, I'll have it turn towards the node. Now we do have parachutes on here, so I guess I can use them to land it and then have Jedin repack them. Or at least help with landing it. 
But it'll depend on how much Delta V I... I, I think I'll have enough Delta V to just uh, land it without the parachutes, we'll see. I'm always, uh, because of prior experience, I'm always a little bit nervous about using the parachutes because they got a little bit complicated in one of my early attempts to land at Duna. Okay, I'm going to take Smart ASS off, SAS on, and that's good enough. We should be skimming through the atmosphere, so it's not going to be a huge, huge heating issue. Let's see now. Oh, we might be coming in too high as it is. We're going to have to dump the transfer stage anyway, so burning off delta V from it is not a problem. In fact, it's it's sort of a solution. Now we do have to hover over the thing before we actually make a landing so that we can do the report 2,500 meters. Huge gap between true altitude and our our indicated altitude above sea level and I wonder if the site is actually too high. I don't know if they want to, if this is over the ground or over sea level the altitude interval here. If it's over sea level, the location might actually be below ground. I don't know. Oh, uh, beginning aerial surveillance. Wow, uh, this is pretty high. I thought it was supposed to be lower. Well, I'll still aim for it anyway. I don't know if... Is that part of the contract fulfilled? No. We need to be lower. Okay, uh, we need to stage, actually. Okay. Here we go. Surface. I need surface. Get landing gear down. I can probably be a little bit more moderate about it now. Okay, so we're on our way down. Let's get some more of these solar panels out. Just so we look proper. So I'm just going to go for a manual touchdown. Um, perhaps on the higher latitude locations I'll use the parachutes. But uh, we'll see how much margin I have with this. Ah, the place looks a little bit uh, lower. Looks like some sort of pit of some kind. Ah, dinner's looking pretty good. The clouds there and everything. Nice little sunset we got there. Okay, we're nearing the determined altitude here. Okay. Alright, we've done it. Alright, let's save the crew report for the surface then. So, on, the, on this landing we had the transfer stage, and so that was to our benefit as well as uh, having the lower latitude to aim at and so I'm gonna see how much margin it is with the fully powered descent and then after that I'll take that into account whether I use the parachutes or not at the higher latitude targets whoa okay quite a slope Quite a slope. Let me do the crew report first. I don't know if it's safe to actually get him out on this slope. Okay, keep data. We'll transmit it once. Well, I guess we can transmit the data. Yeah. We've got all sorts of solar panelry. Should be fine. Okay, now do we have scientific instruments somewhere? Hmm. 
Should have packed some more science on this. Oh no, there's this thermometer here. Log temperature. We'll keep that data. We can transfer it to the station later. Maybe we'll have to transmit it, but it looks like we haven't unlocked more instruments. Probably. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a weird angle to have him pop out. Let's see, does the ladder extend to the ground here? So we've transmitted a recovery. So we fulfilled this contract completely. We fulfilled this part of this contract. Uh, it doesn't quite reach the ground. This could be tricky. All right. Well, let's. When well, we're here, we gotta gotta give it a go. All right. Okay, so here he is. Let's take surface sample, keep the data, EV report, and I'll keep it and transmit once we're inside. I'll have to do the flying over Duna one as well. Let's plant a flag. Okay, Jet on Duna, New Year's Day. Oh. It centers the plaque text now. Anyway, uh, Happy New Year. Okay. Oh, oh. Board. Grab. There we go. Alright. Back up. Board. All right, now let's get back to space. Let's get him back to space. And yeah, we're gonna have to do some inclination changing and all that. It might be better if we put the half moo at a higher inclination than what we've got right now. But let's see how much we've got left over in this after we get into orbit. I'm reasonably confident we can get into orbit hopefully. Otherwise, uh, Jedin's going to have a tough time. Alright. Oh, uh, let's transmit the EVA report while we're down here. So, uh, review stored data. EVA report. Yeah, let's transmit that one. Okay, we'll maintain the surface sample. Oh, I wanted to do the crew report. The, not crew report, the EVA from the ladder. Right. No, no. Okay. Keep the data. Board. Now review that. Transmit that one. Okay. Much science gotten. All right. Now let's head on up there. Mm -hmm. All systems go. Okay, heading to the east. Oh, that's right, right? We are... Hold on, let's uh, set us target. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. We've got one solar panel not out. Wow, we barely get into orbit like this. Hmm, that's a problem. Where did that extra solar panel go? Huh. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, it, uh, atmosphere, bad, right. Surprised the other ones all survived. Well, maybe it got clipped off some other way. Okay. Must remember to retract. Uh, I've got that action group, do I? No. Nope, I don't think I do. Okay, let's go for orbital burn.
not uh, position to adjust inclination. It would be nice to have been able to do the inclination adjustments on this burn, but can't do it. Totally wrong location. Okay, enough of that. Let's see how much it takes just to make the inclination adjustment here. Might be that we have to make the half move handle all of it. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Wow. Crazy. I'm not going to want the half move to do all the docking procedures, but uh, perhaps getting into an inclined orbit is a thing. So, yeah. All right. Uh, first of all, I want to see how much science and such that uh, we accumulated from the fulfillment of this contract and that little bit. So we'll leave we'll leave Jetan in orbit here right now and take a look at what our situation is because oh well okay sometimes it shows it here sometimes it doesn't but yeah we got quite a lot of credits of funds from it and now we've got 400 science. All right, I guess we don't have to turn back. All we have to do is switch to the half move and then we'll get into a better inclination to meet up with this CRT. Okay, so here is the half move and we will target our CRT and let's get into the same inclination. We're approaching the descending node right now so we need to tilt up Since the CRT is going to be trying to hit those higher latitude targets, we might as well just go all the way with it. We'll definitely have to use parachutes from now on. Okay, half move changing its inclination. Okay. Now it's as close as the inclination is going to get from here. 0.37 degrees. I just got down to wondering whether we'll be able to send supplies soon or not. Doesn't look like it. It's going to take a while before we can send more supplies. That's interesting. We'll have to send supplies at the next possible opportunity. I mean, food, water, oxygen, obviously much more fuel. It looks like it's going to take a lot of fuel to do operations around Duna. I don't think we have enough fuel here to hit both points uh, that we were trying to aim for. So we see these two. Now each of these is worth quite a lot. So just uh, one we already did, we got a lot of science for it and we'll probably get a lot more for each of these. But we might not be able to fulfill the contract until, until further down the road when we can get more fuel over here. Okay, anyway, uh, let me continue to attempt this rendezvous. I think the the CRT will have to do the rest of it. I don't want to use up all the fuel in here, and this is heavier now, so better to do with the CRT. So, I've uh, time warped a little bit through a few orbits, and now we have an encounter with our fuel depot, so I'm uh, fine-tuned it so that we are going to approach at 0.6 kilometers. And so I'm just going to hit the node here. Uh, looking at it, it looks like we won't have too much of uh, velocity to burn off once we meet up with it, so that's good. So just executing this maneuver here. Come on. All right, there we go. Up, oh, Jimin's upside down. Let's, let's turn him around. Wait for... Triple joint reinforcement and right side up, please. There we go. Looking much better. An awkward looking craft, but uh, functional, definitely functional. Okay, here we go. Okay, I better. Oh, hold on. I want to turn that off and keep to the node like this. Okay. Okay, 200 meters seems fine. Okay, so we've got an approach at 200 meters. And it's a little bit unfortunate that we have one solar panel missing, but let's have to deal with that. 
Uh, open shield. I'll just go ahead and control from here right now. It won't make too much of a difference. Okay, so let's meet up with the with the fuel depot. Okay, here we go. Just 27.5 meters per second to get rid of. As we approach, we could get a little bit closer before doing the velocity matching burn. Do I have to account for time for uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement to do its thing? Might need to be sparing on RCS. I can't refuel it with the Fuel Depot. The, the Fuel Depot does have RCS. I mean, monopropellant, but not all that much. Okay, let's go to Fuel Depot, line it up with this. If we can find ourselves. CRT, where are you? There we go. All right. Yeah, this has basically the same amount of propellant that the CRT has. Not that much more fuel in its tanks. When you look at, it, we've got 1,274 liquid fuel here. Going back to the CRT, we have an empty capacity of 879. So it can really only refuel the CRT once. That's why we'll need to send some more fuel before trying the third target. I mean, we could probably do the second target with this, though. Judging by the margin, it's going to be tight. Okay, closing in on the fuel depot. We are now 30 meters away. Make sure that we're on the docking port rather than the depot itself. Now 8 meters in closing. Jet and Kerman looks to be alright. Thrilled to be getting some supplementary fuel, I am sure. And of course, first Kerbal to land on Duna in this in the series, I think. Must be, considering we got the EV report and all at full value. Of course, uh, in the newest version, there are biomes on Duna, so lots more science to get in uh, the beta version, 0 0.90. But I think we can be satisfied with this for now. We are trying to colonize it, not milk it for science after all. Okay, docking successful. Now some fuel transfer is in order. You know, it's got to be real hard to rendezvous this back up with the station to have them process... Uh, I, yeah, to have them process all of the data. So I think I'm just, just going to transmit what we've got right now and then uh, on a further trip we might... we might uh, retrieve the data. So let's see. We've just got the surface sample from Duna's surface. I'm just going to transmit this now. And, you know, uh, let me just double check that we've done an EVA. Oh, don't slide off, don't slide off. Okay, let's double check that we've done an EVA. Yeah, we have. Okay, reset. Okay, so that's, that's some science gotten. I think I'm going to hold off on doing the second landing for another episode and uh, not the next episode. The next episode I want to turn back to lunar activities, lunar activities, uh, so that we can uh, get a more robust base going, making sure that our supply situation is better. Right now we've got the 74 days for the Kerbatat, one crew there, and then two crew at the emergency habitat. We need to move the crew in, from the emergency habitat to the Kerbatat. So that'll be something I'm doing in the next episode. And so we'll see if we can uh, put them in a rover and get them over to the Kerbatat without any mishaps occurring. And so after that, the following episode, I'll try and do at least one more landing at uh, this location here, this LJS.
Uh, we'll probably have to wait until it comes around to this side here. Uh, wait, uh, right, right here. Because then that's where our orbit right now has its highest inclination. And so that will be a thing. It'll be a while before we get to send a rover over here. It'll be probably with the next transfer pack when we send more fuel and other supplies. Let's go to the to the space center and see our situation with all these contracts and all. And maybe take a look at the tech tree again. So here are our extant contracts. And so we've got a Minmus contract in three years. Plenty of time to explore with a rover. Probably in an interesting location as well. Uh, the Kerbin one, still 302 days for that. Uh, we've still got two years on the science day around the moon. And then uh, uh, this is the uh, the rover one near the north pole of Duna. And this is the one that we were working on in this episode. Uh, you can see that we actually got 61,000 funds and 138 science for completing just that one site. And once we complete all of this, we will have quite a lot. So, uh, very, very lucrative contract here. As far as available contracts, I position satellite in tundra orbit around the sun. Oh, that's interesting. Um, is that, that's a tundra orbit? Interesting. Five years. Satellite power and antenna. Well, power won't be a problem. Reached a designated with a deviation of less than three percent. Yeah. Okay. Let let's let's have that in there. Yeah, let's go with that as well. Bring a sat, uh, asteroid into orbit around Kerbin. One year, three hundred and fifty-eight days. Okay. Build a new planetary base on the moon. Ten Kerbals. Wow. Ground base must be mobile. Huh. That's interesting. Let's have that one as well. Wow, okay, so we've got a lot of interesting contracts now. This is fascinating stuff. Okay, let's go to the tech tree for a sec. So maybe another thing I'm going to be doing is sending a mobile base to the moon that can carry 10 Kerbals. That should be quite a thing. Uh, but uh, first, We've got 460 science, and I was distressed to see how little science that we had on the lander. It looks like we have some, well, barometer is useless. Uh, seismometer we probably should have had on there, but it's very expensive, so that's probably why I avoided it. Uh, we need 90 more science to get the gravioli. That's what I was looking for, but we can't do that yet. Okay, uh, so I'll hold on to the science and uh, aim to unlock the gravioli as soon as possible. That'll be very helpful. All right, so we managed to land on Duna. We managed to fulfill some serious contract stuff. And uh, we got Jen Kerman his first EVA on the surface. And he planted a flag. Um, I, this is going to be a short episode for the new year. And uh, I'll pick things up and pick up the pace in the next episode. So... With that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.